So, and now with, uh, I come with some example. This one here is a, is a needle plate electrode. So needle will be energized with high voltage. The plate will be put to ground as I did it here. So this is a testing situation. You see the high voltage is going from here to the high voltage power supply to the high voltage transformer. And here's the ground connected. And we could see partial discharges here. The conventional PD tester is showing that pattern. It's a so-called FEQ, uh, not frequent, PRPD pattern, phase resolved partial discharge pattern with the phase angle here, magnitude here, and the counts in set direction, so in our direction, let's say. Yeah, and this one here is generated by the Fluke camera. And it's the ideal example because both are on the same phase position. Yeah, the so PRPD pattern require a phase information that is coming with the signal here. And here it's it's just it's a random phase angle, but here it fits perfectly well. And we see it's measuring the same. Yeah, we have one PD source. It's clearly Corona, and the same one here is shown with the acoustic camera. Or the next example here. These are two parts, just models of of a winding insulation with a conductor copper conductor here, insulation, and on top of the insulation some Corona protection material. The next one in parallel, and while energizing here, we see here a lot of corona and possibly gap discharges. The conventional PD tester shows that behavior here. The acoustic camera, this behavior here on the bottom. And the, on bo both patterns are the same. If you don't believe me, that peak here that is clearly indicating corona happens here. And that one here, that cloud here, it happens here, it's just phase shifted. And I can support you in this just by cutting this out, putting it to here, and you see it's more or less the same pattern. So again, it shows the same. This, here it has more than one PD source, at least it's at, it has two or three. First it's Corona here, gap discharges here, and maybe something internal, maybe not. There I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. The next example here, this is also a model of a stator winding of a stator winding bar. So copper conductor here insulated and there's some grading material on top. It generates PD here at the overlapping of the black tape to the gray tape here. So it's something that happens external. It's the test at lower voltage. Um, that insulation, if you make a cut through that bar here, it's looking like that. This is a copper conductor surrounded by insulating material. To have an idea about the thickness, it's about three, four millimeters here. Yeah, so that thickness here. It's not more than that three or, three or four millimeters. This one is a very good example. That bar that we see here was treated with thermal cycling, which means it was heated up to very high temperature, cooled down, heated up, cooled down, and so. And then it happened that the insulation is damaged, that it's shearing off, the insulation is shearing off from the copper, and then some voids and gaps are created in the insulation, and we have learned from some slides before, if there's gaps in the insulation and I apply high voltage, then it comes to PD here. Yeah, I like this example here very much because we see here the PD, and at the same time we see here an air armature that is leaking. So this one here is measured with the, with the acoustic camera at the same time. It's not only PD that we see. And we made a test at, this, uh, at a higher voltage, we got this figure here and we got this figure here at the same voltage. The, the difference is you have chosen a band of about plus minus 40 kilohertz on top and on bottom I have chosen a, a lower frequency range here. It's 12 to 22 or something like that. So what is the difference? On top I have seen, I can see the surface PD that we had before Plus, because I know it is firing a lot of PD inside of the insulation, I look a little bit inside of the insulation. So what we get is a PD pattern here, and in the lower frequency range, a PD pattern that is pretty much looking the same. For me, it's looking the same. But on top, it says, okay, Corona arcing 76%, which means, okay, it's something it's external. If I reduce the frequency, I'm looking behind the wall. Yeah, so it's just compare it. If someone is talking, 
in your room, you will understand everything if he is outside of the room and the voice has, has to pass the wall, all the high frequency content will go away. And we only hear the low frequency content and th this is what we see here. I tested with a lower frequency content and with that one, I can see a little bit deeper into the winding or in the, into the insulation and it happened that it's now mainly measuring internal discharges or discharges that are happening in the insulation. So at least I can look behind the wall with that, that method. But I need, of course, stronger PD sources for that. Next example, this is now a rotor winding, a, a stator winding of a machine. And we did some high voltage testing on that stator winding. And it turned out, this measurement is done at 3 kV, that it's starting PD having here at the slot exit. The conventional measurement has shown this picture here. The, 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 the acoustic provided this picture. And in examples before, it was always both were plus minus the same. But why is it different? It's very clear during that, that testing here, we energize about 30% of the machine. And the machine is full of voids and gaps and so on and so on because they're built in from the beginning. Plus, they are built in during operation. They, they appear during, opera or during operation and aging. So, and we measure here everything. It's a mixture about everything that is happening in the slots, outside of the slots, and so on. With the acoustic camera, we just see that pin point here. And we see, for example, as asymmetry, and that asymmetry tells me some story. What is going on? Why is it going on? And making a visual inspection, we could identify that spot here. It's exactly that point that we see here in the camera. With the camera, we, we found this point here. And I'm pretty sure you will not see anything because also I did not see anything really nice. Yeah. And that machine here had about 800 of positions that that can show such such a damage, about 800. And I also told this morning, some two weeks ago, so I was on the machine that had six times as many of these locations, so about 5,000 of these locations. So if you have to make a visual inspection to find such spots that may need repair, that need repair, it takes a really long time. It may, may take days or a week or so to find them. With a corona camera, I will show in the next slide, it will go faster, pretty sure. So we did testing at 3000 volts, 4300 volts and 6000 volts. These are the conventional PD, PD measurements and these are videos that I took during that time. So we start with, with low voltage. Whoops. Oh, it does not work. Sorry. Now. <clears throat> you see there's nothing. Yeah, we applied 3000 volt. We cannot see anything. And now it happens. There is a spot we found before. It started very early. It was the first spot that we could find on that machine and we could find on this machine. So if we have to repair, it's most likely the most critical part because it starts generating PD first and it will continue at higher voltage and will become stronger at higher voltage. So as I said, we increase the voltage and then we come to that behavior here. Here our famous PD source that we had before, plus of course, because of the higher voltage, other PD sources start as well, as you can see here. And also you see on the opposite side, because it's also on high voltage, you also see PD locations here and here and so on. So we got an early indication, okay, I also have to focus there. If I have to make a repair, it's also there. And these locations here, where you see the PD, this is not whatever aging, it's electrical aging caused by the high voltage. So it's really PD aging that led to the fact that we see PD here or here and so on. And then the last one at highest voltage. Yeah, you see, because it's higher voltage, it's even more PD sources are triggered. And you see it's now generating PD all over. Yeah. And so again, if you have to make a repair and you have the chance to make a high voltage test, use the camera and you can see or identify the critical points that need the earliest repair or the most most, let's say, most care. You can see with that camera relatively easy. So I come to the conclusions and so. So phase resolve PD patterns are commonly used for pattern assessment and the camera is supporting this. Um, 
Can you please mute the microphone? Yeah. Um, during offline.